Blessings, 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 blessings to each and every one of you all. I want to thank you for tuning in with me to a new episode of The Right Now Word. I'm excited that you guys are here with me on tonight. It's been a while um, that I'm bringing forth a new episode to you all. I'm excited about we're at the end of August and we know that August stood for new beginnings. But my friends, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that we're about to go into the ninth month of the year. Yes, that's right. The ninth month of the year, the number nine that stands for birthing. I'm so glad that I was able to come before you guys on going towards the ninth month of the year to prepare you to get you ready to birth. Amen. To get you ready to birth your promise, to get you ready to birth your vision, to get you ready to birth whatever that thing is that God has placed inside of you. So you're in the eighth month going into the ninth month. We're about to go into the ninth month, which will be September. And so you're about to give birth. So I come tonight to act as a midwife to help you birth, to prepare you for the labor room, to prepare you for the table, because you're about to birth something great. You're about to birth something mighty. You're about to birth something awesome. For those of you who are tuning in and you're trying to figure out who is this lady and what broadcast is this, you have tuned into the all new Right Now Word. We're excited that you guys have tuned in with us on this awesome, awesome, awesome evening. I want you to do me a favor those of you who have just tuned in what I want you to do for me I want you to tag somebody I want you to email somebody I want you to call somebody I want you to text somebody I want you to DM somebody I want you to call in the other room to your husband your wife your children anybody that's in your home and let them know that Dr. Dolores C. Henderson is right here right now on the right now word to bring you a right now word a word that is in season a word that will get you ready to receive the promises that God has for your life. Last night, the night before last, we talked about, if you guys tuned into the radio broadcast, we talked about um, birthing as well, but we also talked about what God is getting ready to do as it relates to those of you who have been in a barren state. We talked about how the your barren days are over. We talked about how God is about to Amen. Make you fertile. Glory to God, because the opposite of barren is fertile. And, and in this instance, we came out of the book of Isaiah. We talked about how in the beginning of the book of Isaiah, the 54th chapter, when God was speaking to, um, he used a woman to refer to his people as being barren, but he was, a, he was coming to them to restore them to fertility, amen, to restore them so that they would be able to produce, so they would be able to be prosperous, so that they would be able to um, receive the promises that he has spoken over their lives. Because how many of you know that the God that we serve is not like man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. If he makes you a promise, he is well able to deliver on every promise that he has spoken over your life, promises that he has spoken over your life when you was in your mama's womb, promises that he has spoken of your life when your mama birthed you out, promises that he has spoken to you face to face in dreams or in visions or in his word, because we know that his word, amen, is him. Glory to God. And so he is coming to break the back of barrenness. And we know barrenness just simply means that you're not able to produce. You're not able, you're not fertile. You're not able to um, put out. You're not able to come through. It just simply means that you're in a stagnant state and you're not able to produce. We know what Jesus did to the tree that wasn't able to produce. He cursed it. Amen. Glory to God. But I just come to tell you on tonight that any curse that has been spoken over your life, that has been spoken Spoken over your mama's life. That has been spoken over your daddy's life. Your generations. Your bloodline. We come to bind and rebuke it. And destroy it from off of your life. And we command you to prosper. We command you to be fruitful. And we command you to multiply. We also talked about the night before on the show. How God was getting ready to restore. Rejuvenate and to re 
energized those who have been um pushing and praying and those who have been waiting on the Lord and those who have been consistent, glory to God, those who have been consistent, been pushing, been praying, been waiting on the Lord and believing and trusting without wavering, knowing that God was going to come for them, that God said that um, he was coming forth, amen, to break the back of barrenness. And then we used also, um, we talked about how the joy of the Lord is our strength. We also talked about, um, uh, we came from, again, Isaiah 54, but we also talked about Hannah and how Hannah had to do something different in order for her blessings to come forth, in order for the curse of barrenness, in order for barrenness to be broken from off of her life. We talked about barrenness is not always a bad thing. We talked about how sometimes God will put you in a waiting state, in a waiting place, so that you he can strengthen you in the process so you will be able to go through the storm and you won't get swamped, that you will be able to go through the fire and you won't get burned that you will be able to walk through rejection and not go running a hole and crawling in and not come out but you would be able to to shake the dust off of your feet and keep it moving that God was strengthening you but we also talked about how a lot of times when God have you waiting on something glory to God it's because he saves the best for last and I come to tell somebody on tonight that the first should be last and the last should be first if somehow you feel like you've been last if somehow you feel that you've been forgotten. I come to tell you that God has not forgotten about you, that you are the apple of his eye, that God has not forgotten about you. As he stated before, he states now that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you, for you are the apple of his eye. Glory to God. And so we also talked about in talking about Hannah, how she had to do something different in order to get her blessing. Everybody thought she had gone mad. Everybody thought that she had gone crazy. Even the priest said, girl, what's going on with you now? You ain't told who you talking to. Glory to God. And so she had to remind the priest that, no, I'm not crazy. But she was doing something different to get something that only the Lord can give her. Glory to God. How many of you know that it's only some things that God can give you? Glory. There's only some things that God can do when man cannot do. And so she she recognized that this thing that I'm going through, only God can change it. Only God can make it happen. And so she believed and she changed her posture. And I talked about how a lot of times we got to change our posture. We have to change our mindset. We have to think, we have to change the way that we think about a matter, how we're thinking about a thing. Glory to God. Because a lot of times our thinking is thinking and we got to meditate on his word day and night. We got to speak wonderful things. We have to speak lovely things. We have to forgive and we have to um, release those who have hurt us. And we have to release ourselves from people that we have hurt as well. Glory to God. Because when God forgive, he said, I remember your sins no more. Glory to God. And so we talked about how she postured herself, repositioned herself, repostured herself, and changed her mindset. And when she did that, she was able to pray and, and tell the man of God exactly what was wrong with her. She didn't go mad. She didn't go crazy. She just simply said that I'm praying for this. And the Bible says that it was this time, the next year that she gave birth. And I talked about how a lot of times God also have us waiting because we, we, what we're about to give birth to is something so great. It's something so wonderful. It's something so awesome that has never been seen before. But how many of you know that her waiting was not in vain? And I come to tell somebody on tonight that your waiting is not in vain. If you look at the story of Hannah in, in the book of Samuel, you will see that she didn't just birth any old child. She didn't just birth any old thing. But the Bible says that she birthed a prophet and the, and the prophet that she birthed, he established the first school of the prophets whose name was the prophet Samuel, who not only established the first school of the prophets, but he also anointed the next king of Israel. That's right, anointed and crowned King David. Glory to God. And so a lot of times when God has us waiting, it's because it's something so great he wants to do in our lives. It's something so wonderful. Some of you are waiting because you are about to birth out something that's going to change atmosphere. You're about to birth out something that's going to change nations. You're going to birth out something that's going to break generational curses and destroy generational curses in your family. You're going to birth out something that's going to be so great, so awesome, and it's going to tear down the enemy's kingdom. And so, yes, a lot of times God has us waiting, not because of something that we've done. It's because he's building us. He's He's building us. And I told him, I said, God is building you. He's, he's giving you um 
carriage. He's giving you carriage. He's giving you, he's strengthening your faith. And not only that, but he's letting you know that, that he is God and he's God all by himself. And that if you keep on trusting, if you keep on believing that the thing that you're going to birth is going to raise up. It's going to be raised up and it's going to show you why he had you waited. And so tonight, I just want to simply encourage you. I just want to simply um, push you. I just want to simply tell you to push because you're about to give birth. You're about to give birth to something great. You're about to give birth to something awesome. You're about to give birth to something that people eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I want you to simply meditate, begin to start meditating and on his word. I want you to begin to start, uh, I'm not just meditating, but I want you to go into, go on a fast before the end of this month, the last week in the month of August. I want you to go on, to go on a fast. I want you to go on a fast. So when September hit, which would be the ninth month, you're going to give birth to that thing. I come to tell somebody on tonight and I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. Your barren days are over. It's time to stop thinking about the past. It's time to look toward your future because your past and your present and your future is covered under the blood. That's right. Your past, your present, and your future is covered under the blood. Glory to God. And so I just wanted you to just get excited tonight. I want you to get excited. I want you to jump up. I want you to do some cockwheels and flips because I want you to know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I want you to know that God is about to re-strengthen you. He's about to put you back in the, your rightful place. A lot of you have gotten out of your, gotten out of position, gotten out of place, and God said, I'm coming to put you in your rightful place, in your rightful position to let you know that it was from the beginning of time as it is today that you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. Glory to God. You are the head and you would never be the tail. You are above and you would never be beneath. You are the lender and you would never, ever, ever, ever be the barber. So that's the position that God wants to push you in back in your rightful position. Because my friends, the Bible says that we are joint as with Christ. And to be joint as with Christ means that everything on the earth and in the heaven belong to us. Glory to God. We're, if we're joint as with Christ, that means that the heavens and the earth belongs to us. And I talked about how it's very important that we got to remind God of the prayer that Jesus says, when you pray, I want you to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let me just put a pen right there because people, you don't realize that you have the kingdom living inside of you. And what is the kingdom? The kingdom is God. So if you got the kingdom living inside of you, you can say anything and it shall come to pass. Remember in the beginning, God spoke and things came into existence. Remember? So you have that same power, my friends. If the kingdom reside in you, the Holy Spirit reside in you, glory to God. The anointing is all all over you, glory to God, and you use your uh, your weapons of offense, use your weapons of warfare, you can have what you say, you can have what you put your foot on, amen, every place that you put your foot on, that you want, you can have it, because you have the kingdom living inside of you, and when the kingdom lives inside of you, you're already healed, you're already delivered, you're already set free, you just got to break into and, and count, break into what's already there. And what's already there is the kingdom of God. Glory. And so a lot of you don't know the magnificent of the magnificent of having the kingdom living inside of you. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, you have to pray. Let that Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And his will for you, my friends, is simply for you to live the abundant life. His will for you is for you to be healthy. His will for you is for you to be wealthy. His will for you is to have everything that belongs to him. And what belongs to him belongs to you because you are a joint heir with Christ. That means that everything that he has, it belongs to you. So tonight, I just want to simply come to encourage you to let you know that poverty will never be your portion. Sick 
weakness will never be your portion. Glory to God. Lack will never be your portion. Why? Because you have the kingdom of God living inside of you. You got to invoke it. Invoke it and speak it and say, kingdom of God, rise up and go before me. You got to be able to call on the kingdom. Glory to God. Amen. Call on the kingdom and make it work for you. Glory. And so that means that you're already wealthy. You just got to know how to work the principles to get it. Amen. You're already healthy. Amen. That's why And when you read the book of Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24, the Bible says, by your stripes, we are healed. Whenever you see an ED on, the, on a word, that means that it's past tense. That means that it's already done. Amen. So you have to walk like it's already done. You got to walk and talk like you're already healed. You got to act like you're already healed. You got to walk and talk like you're already in your wealthy place. Not that he's going to take you to your wealthy place, but you're in a wealthy place. You reside in a wealthy place. You sleep in a wealthy place. You rest in a wealthy place. God is trying to get us to a place where we are resting in a wealthy place. And what I mean by that is that you are whole w-h-o-l-e glory to god you are whole glory to god meaning in every area of your life you're you're whole you're complete glory <clears throat> amen and so i'm excited again to talk to you guys we're just having a conversation on tonight like i said this is we're going into the month of of September, and that is the birth them up. So in the birth them up, we want to be cognizant that we're, go, we're about to get our breakthrough because, amen, you're chosen. I also talked about, <clears throat> and let me be clear about this. I also talked about when we talked on the radio the other night, how it, what it means to be chosen. And a lot of times people get it twisted. We, sometimes people think that if you're chosen, that you're not supposed to go again, go, um, go, and have issues. You're not supposed to you know, have issues. You're not supposed to have uh, things that happen to you. And that's just simply not true. A lot of times when you are chosen, you go through trials. You go through tribulations. You go through things. I tell people all the time, if you're reading the Bible, you will see and you will find that a lot of the chosen ones went through things. Just ask Joseph, glory, who his family did him wrong. He caught, found himself in a ditch. He found himself in jail. Amen. But God showed him how chosen he was because after he had suffered for a while, who glory, the Bible says after you have suffered for a while, then watch out. God is about, is going to show up in your life. So after he had gone through his trial, after he had gone through his test, after he had gone through everything he needed to go through to get him to the place where he ended up, and that was the place beside Pharaoh, second in command, where he was able to save his entire family. Glory to God. And not just that. Look at Moses. All that Moses had to go through, Moses was chosen. Amen. Glory to God. Moses had to go through a lot. The people coming up against him, his own sister and, and brother coming up against him because of the, the wife that he chose. Amen. And so... A lot of that is going on. And so he not only that, but he had to go through a lot, even with the people of Israel bucking up against his leadership. Not just that. Look at the, the prophet Ezekiel, priest turned prophet. Amen. He had to go through a lot. He was chosen. He lost his wife. Amen. And God said, you no more, no grieving. I need you to keep on going. Look at Jeremiah, the, the crying prophet who cried and cried every single day that he got the name, the crying prophet. Look at Elijah. One day he was powerful. Then one day he was uh, acting like he, he was, didn't know who he was chosen. Look at Elisha chosen. Amen. Look at Mary. Jesus's mom, the first woman to carry the gospel, to birth the gospel, and to walk with the gospel. So all those people talking about women shouldn't be preaching, women shouldn't be talking. Well, my friends, Mary was a woman. And not only that, she carried the gospel. Not only that, she birthed the gospel. And she walked with the gospel. The first woman to ever carry the gospel. Glory. The first woman to ever speak the gospel. Glory. Because she spoke to her child, who was Jesus, who was the word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, amen, and became flesh and dwelt among us. So Mary was the first person who ever spoke to Jesus Christ, the gospel, the word, carried it, birthed it, and walked with it. And so, guess what? 
but it wasn't always easy for her because she got um, pregnant by way of the Holy Spirit, but she was engaged at the time and everybody thought she had slept with the man and they were going to kill her. So she had to go through insults. She had to go through her name being scandalized. She had to go through lies being told on her. Amen. She was chosen. So if you're feeling somehow, some way, like what is going on, why I'm going through this, why this happening to me, I just stop by to tell you you're simply chosen. You're fitfully and wonderfully made in the, in the chosen. It's not easy for the chosen. God has to get you to a place where you can depend and lean on him and prepare you to birth out the dream, the vision, his purpose first. Because I tell people all the time that all things work together for the good of them who love him. And those who are called according to his purpose. So he has to get you ready, get you prepared, get you um, make you solid so that you would be able to birth forth his purpose in your life. Glory. So all of the people that I just named, my friends, they were chosen. So if somehow you think that you're not chosen, I come to tell you that the devil is a liar. You are chosen. You have been set for, set forth set for such a time as this. This is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. Not next year, but right now, tonight. Amen. Glory to God for you to give birth. For you to give birth to the dream. For you to give birth to the vision. For you to give birth to the ministry. For you to give birth to whatever it is that you know that you have, that God has put in your mind. And those of you who have already given birth and you may feel like everything has gotten stagnant, I come to tell you that that thing is about to fertilize and it's about to blossom and it's about to bloom. And those of you who are going through your caterpillar stage, I come to tell you that you are about to turn into a beautiful multicolor butterfly because it's your time to bloom. It's your time to fly. It's your time to be all that God has called you to be. It's your time. Amen. It's your season. I just want you to take a few seconds, pat yourself on the back, shake the dust off your feet, look yourself in the mirror and say, it's my time. It's my season. I'm next. Glory to God. Many didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. I made it over. I'm next. It's my time. It's my season to birth the promises of God, to walk in the promises of God, to carry the promises of God. Like Murray who carried who birth and walk is my time to carry, to birth and to walk in my purpose, to walk in the position that God wants me to have. Glory to God. So I come tonight to, to just um, speak um, um, prosperity in your ear, healing in your ear, deliverance in your ear. Those of you who have been praying for a family member, I just come to tell you that that family member is about to be saved. That family member is about to speak in time. That family member is about to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those of you who have been praying for a breakthrough, you know what you've been praying for. You've been walking the floors. You've been trying to figure out what's going on. Tonight is your night of breakthrough. Tonight is your night to move forward and to get the promises of God. And I talked about earlier in the show, I talked about the joy of the Lord being your strength. But I also want to add in his right hand is pleasures forevermore. When you get in his presence, I want you to do this in the last few days in August, I want you to get into the presence of the Lord. I want you to fast. I want you to pray and I want you to get in the presence of the Lord and I want you to tell him all about it. I want you to come before him naked and not ashamed. And because the Bible says that in his right hand is pleasures forevermore. That means that not only does he want to restore your joy, but he also wants to give you the pleasures, glory. Going back to what Jesus spoke, he said, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And so he wants you to live the abundant life. He wants you to not just live it, but he wants you to rest in it. Meaning that once he give you the abundant life as you work for it, amen, as you waited patiently and been consistent in striving, when it comes to you, he wants you not to be worried about how you're going to handle it, how you're going to deal with it, but he wants you to rest in it. Amen. So he wants you to rest in it. Jesus says, 
as I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So a lot of times people think that he's just talking about money, but he is talking about money. He is talking about wealth, but he's also talking about a sound mind. He's also talking about restoring your peace. He's also talking about restoring your joy. He's always, he's also talking about, um, well, prosperity, but also deliverance and healing. He's talking about healing your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I want you to continue to be steadfast, unmovable in all ways, abounded in the work of the Lord, because I want you to know on tonight that your labor is not in vain. Let me say that again. I want you to know tonight that your labor is not in vain. What you've been working towards, what you've been working for, God said that he's about to come and he's about to make it an overflow. That's right. It's about to be an overflow in your life. It's about to rain blessings, showers of blessings in your life. I'm reminded of the prophet Elijah when he told um, his servant, he said, I want you to go and look up in the sky and you tell me, what do you see? He said he had to go seven times and at the seven times he saw a cloud as a fist of a man, uh, as a size of a man's hand. That means that I want you to know that it's about the rain in your life. That means that it's about the shower in your life. That thing that has been barren, that thing that has been dried up, the thing that has dried up, the thing that has been barren. God says, sing, O barren woman, thou who didn't um, travel, I want you to know that he's coming um, to restore. He's coming to fertilize. He's coming to make the rain, make the water overflow over your drought. He's coming to make the rain and the water overflow over your dry place. He's coming to make the rain overflow, overflow and, and, and overshadow. Glory to God. All over that hurting place, that hurting place. He's about to make it rain on it. Amen. That stubborn place, that place that it just seemed like it just won't break. I come to tell you on tonight that something can break it. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost. He's coming to rain on, on that drought. He's coming to rain on that dry place. And he's coming to rain on that barren land to make it prosperous, to make it sprout up, to make it live again. Every time I think about something being dead, but then alive, I think about um, the valley of the dry bones when the um, God told the prophet to speak to the dry bones. I come to tell you on tonight, speak to the burn womb, speak to the burn way, speak to the dry bones and command it to live by the power of the Holy Ghost. Command it to, to live, command it to thrive, command it to win, command it to succeed, command it, who shots high glory to God by the power of God. To be prosperous in the name of Jesus. You just got to speak. I started out talking about how we are joint heirs with Christ. I talked about us having the kingdom of God inside of us. Everything that I spoke to you guys on tonight, I was simply giving you tools to succeed, tools to apply and to encourage and motivate you to let you know that you are not alone, that you have a, you have a God who cares about you. You have a God who hears you. He, you have a God who loves you, who will provide for you and who will give you everything that you need. You just got to be steadfast and unmovable. I talked about getting into his presence because in his right hand are pleasures for evermore. I just come to simply tell you on tonight to give you this right now word to let you know that your barren season is over, that you are about to give birth and you're about to give birth to something great, something mighty, something awesome. And I just simply come and tell you and I call out and I shout out and I scream out and I just say, push, push that baby out, push that dream out, push that vision out, Push it out because it's in there. It's in there. And if you're dealing with one, a, a stubborn baby, a stubborn child that just don't want to come out, I just want you to tap it on the stomach and speak and declare and decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will release. You will release. You will release in Jesus' mighty name. So I want you to be encouraged and I want to thank you for tuning in with me on tonight. But before I get off, I got to leave you with this one thing. When you're in, on the labor table, because a lot of you are on the labor table, but many of you are long overdue. But while you're on that labor table, I want you to remember this. God is not like man that he shall lie. 
neither the son of man that he should repent. If he make you a promise, he's well able to deliver and come forth for you. Thank you for listening to the Right Now Word. God bless you and have a good night.